All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for joining in today. Uh, maybe let's get started as people uh, join in. Um, for the people who have joined just now, we were just saying that you know, if you could just put a small introduction about yourself on the chat window of uh, you know, your name and what do you do, where do you work, uh, or if you're a student or you're looking for a job change, uh, uh, where it works, you know, if you could just uh, put a small note, I think that'll be really helpful for, for us to know each other. Okay, so uh, let me just share my screen. Um, right. Hope you're all seeing my screen. You can be a little more interactive. Just a small few guidelines, which which all of us know. I think we we've been working from home for the last two years now, so not not something which is a uh, new. Uh, so if, if possible, just keep your videos on as much as possible. Um, I mean, as much as we are in, uh, you know, doing this remotely, at least, you know, if you're on video, we know that uh, we can get as close as possible. Um, and uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can be on mute or if you have any questions, anything you'd like to discuss, please unmute and uh, uh, we can make this a lot more interactive. Um, if you have any questions, uh, please type in the chat window or raise your hand. Um, so we, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end of uh, uh, the, both the uh, you know, uh, sessions. Uh, so please feel free to type in your question uh, after the session. Um, we will have a, a panelist answer those questions. And if you have any technical issues, just feel free to uh, uh, type in, in the chat window. And uh, this, uh, this session is recorded. Um, and we would be, you know, uh, using it and uh, posting it on our websites just for you know, everybody to use. Um, like I said, let's be interactive uh, as much as uh, we can. Um, so what do we have for today? Uh, we have uh, two sessions, um, uh, one on, um, on, you know, building a resume, which is, which I think all of us uh, have gone through uh, some, uh, at some point in our career. Uh, or if you're looking for a, a, in a job, you would be still wondering, you know, what would be that optimal or the ideal way of uh, building a resume that, 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 that can attract the recruiters. And the other one is LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is becoming the, the most in thing in the corporate world, right? Um, so let's, let's also see you know, how we can use uh, LinkedIn effectively. Uh, we have Rebecca Haynes and uh, Edwin James from, you know, they are experts in the respective field. Um, so those are the two sessions today. Uh, and we would have our uh, Q&A at the end of the uh, session. So before we start, uh, I would request Ratna to lead us in prayer. Um, and then uh, we'll get into uh, the session straight away. Yeah. Thank you, Ricky. So let's talk. Our gracious Father, we come to your presence in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and mercy in our lives. Father God, we thank you that you have enabled each one of us to come and, Father God, gather virtually to learn, Father God, from Rebecca and uh, Edwin. Father, even as we gathered here, Father God, we believe that, Father God, that Jesus Christ is in our midst. And we pray that, Father God, let the entire session, Father God, be directed, oh, Father God, as for the leading of the Holy Spirit of God, oh, Father God. We come at each one of the speakers. We come at each one of the uh, people who are logged in, who are going to log in, and who may even see it after it is recorded, oh, Father God. We pray that, oh, Father God, let them receive a touch from your throne, oh, Father God, mm -hmm. and let them receive, oh, Father God, guidance for their career, oh, Father God, from your throne, oh, Father God. Let each one's purpose of Father God be fulfilled of Father God by the uh, uh, wisdom that is from the Holy Spirit of God, of Father God. We commit the entire session into your hands. We commit the speakers into your hands, of Father God. Let your name alone be glorified, of Father God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you, Radna. Um, all right. Our, our first speaker for today is... Uh, Rebecca Haynes, and uh, she's uh, a lot of people would be familiar uh, um, uh, with her. And uh, yeah, she worships at our South Church um, uh, for a long, long time. 
um, and had been an integral part of the South Church. He's been serving in, uh, in several areas uh, at South Church, um, and we are happy that she is here. Uh, Rebecca has, has this passion for people and brands, uh, which, which led her to explore uh, various roles across HR and uh, corporate marketing in Asia Pacific, uh, Japan, uh, and in the UK region. Japan is, I think, that's a wonderful experience. I currently work with the Japan market and know how difficult it is. Uh, and I'm sure she brings a lot of experience working with the Japan, uh, Japanese market. Um, she also uh, took a sabbatical from work and pursued a full-time master's in international business from the University um, College of Dublin. Um, and she has managed a talent channel strategy for uh, Wells Fargo, India, Philippines, and, uh, and the APAC region. Uh, she specializes uh, in various domains, strategic uh, HR planning, uh, recruitment, uh, talent acquisition, um, uh, employer branding, recruitment marketing, total rewards, and, and, and the list goes on. Anything and everything about, you know, in the field of HR. Um, she loves to invest in students and the graduates as, as a career coach and uh, career coach volunteer. Uh, she's a digital media uh, enthusiast, um, and uh, yeah, like I said, uh, you know, we are so happy to have her uh, today. And uh, over to you, Rebecca. Looking forward. Thank you, Melky. Um, and uh, I'm glad to be helping so many people. I think as a part of a Christian Professionals Ministry Group, we you know keep getting resumes. Uh, in a WhatsApp group and somebody is trying to network. So one of the things that we noticed at that point in time is that uh, a lot of people resumes have not you know, updated, it's not current. Um, and one of the things is that uh, it is your foot in the door, right? I mean, the goal is to get an interview and if your resume is not um, the way it should be because there's hundreds of resumes you know, reaching the recruiters, it, you're not going to get that, you know, that one look. Um, that is absolutely essential. So, so this session is to, you know, um, I cannot claim to be a super expert, but, but in the last 10 years or so, uh, one is that, you know, personally, I have helped a lot of people uh, update their resumes in the process. I've looked at, you know, what are the typical mistakes people make? Um, and, and some of the mistakes that I've learned from my own self, you know, as I'm looking for opportunities and stuff. So all those background and experience, and of course, I work closely with, though I'm part of uh, the talent acquisition team, I handle the branding part of, for the organization. And, um, and, and uh, one of the things that I have seen uh, while working with the recruiters is, you know, I get to hear from them what kind of CVs they get, what kind of CVs that is most likely to be seen. So all of those background and experiences is what I'm just trying to take in this, uh, I would say, eight slides. Um, I've broken it down into different pieces and we will try and, and cover. I mean, there were some questions that came actually earlier. Uh, I'll try to cover as much as possible in the slide set. If not, then, of course, we have time for question answer session. Um, do I have the control, uh, Melki, to move on to the slide set? Yes. Uh, uh, do you want to request control again? Uh, okay, let me or I can I can keep moving the slides. Yes, sister. One quick question, Rajiv. Will we be getting the slides after this so that we can be very attentive in the uh, listening to you or making? Yeah, Arij Arijit, we would we would upload this on our website. Thank you. Uh, the whole session will be available. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, 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 it was not me who actually asked the question. This Rajiv. is Rajiv. <laughs> I'm Rajiv. Okay, Rajiv. Sorry, sorry, Rajiv. <laughs> sorry, Rajiv. <laughs> okay, I think I have control, right, Milky? Yep. Okay, I'll just go. Okay. Oh. Um, yeah, no, I just want to just leave that a little bit. I think this is our mission, right? As all people's church to be the salt and light. I think one of the reasons that, you know, your CV is who you are and an absolute, um, to make sure that you, you know, look your best, the excellent and, you know, and the idea is to make sure, make yourself outstanding, you know, have your CV outstanding, um, just in reflection of that uh, particular verse as well. Okay, so before I actually do this, uh, I don't know if I can see everybody, but I want to see how many people are 
graduates and how many people are uh, experienced professional. From what I've seen in the chat messages, I'm guessing that a lot more are experienced folks here. If I'll be able to see them. Will I be able to see Melki, all those folks when they raise their hands? Can you please raise their hand? Raise your hand if you're, if you're experienced. So out of 37 folks, 14 of them have raised, it's going up. So I'm guessing majority of you are experienced folks. So if you can put your hand down, can I request if there's anybody who's graduate or entry-level professional who's looking to first get into their first job, um, if any of you are here, uh, please raise your hand. Okay, so I guess about five, six people. So I, I guess the majority is folks who are experienced, right? Okay, uh, before, I, before I move on, uh, you know, this is just an example of experience on the left side is people who are experienced their typical CV. That's how my CV looks like. This is the format that I use. Uh, on the right side is graduate folks who are just finishing, they don't have experience. So their education comes first, just a snapshot before I move on. Uh, I'm trying to navigate, okay. So CV is your most important tool of your job search. I think anything I do, it sort of like goes off. <laughs> okay. So um, your personal branding tool, I think you have to give absolutely uh, that extra effort that's needed for building your CV. When I wanted to do my CV or even update my CV, I spent at least two to three days to make sure that I'm you know, looking at whatever I've done in the past. Is it a reflection of what I'm aiming for? Um, is it uh, something that's current? You know, am I using a language that's appropriate? So I do spend quite a bit of time before I actually um, you know, create my CV or update my CV, even if I'm updating my CV. And especially if you're creating a CV, in my experience, what I've seen is, um, I have done this with a lot of people that they, they don't realize that you know, they need to be prepared with a lot of content before they actually start working on the CV. Um, it is the first, like I said, it's the first opportunity. It's the first impression that you make with the recruiters or the hiring managers. Um, and you don't have an opportunity to go and re really talk and sell yourself, right? So the only opportunity that you have is your CV. So it's a very, very important tool, uh, especially if you want to, um, I think internally as well, right? If you're uh, if you're looking for opportunities within the organization, CV is again required. So I would say you at least need to take a look at your CV um, once every year, ideally speaking. I know sometimes you are not looking at opportunities, but it's always good to have a CV updated um, just so that you know what, uh, you, know, what you have done. Um, and in terms of your journey are you going where you're supposed to go um, or in case you want to change the career path is there anything that you can actually do to change that uh, I would say path you know whether it is upskilling yourself or um, unless and until you're sort of like really taking stock of that situation you won't be able to like really steer your career in the right direction um, one more thing a lot of people don't understand is the applicant tracking system. I know only if you're in HR, perhaps you would understand. So every organization, I would say most of the organization, big and small, have an automated system where, you know, they post the jobs and when you apply the jobs, it goes and sits in the applicant tracking system. And the recruiters take uh, the CV from the applicant tracking system. So here I would like to like really bring your notice to the recruiters, right? Um, a lot of people, I mean, within my family circle, extended circle, they're all frustrated with recruiters. <laughs> and they say that, oh, I've sent my CV, I don't get any response. But you'll also have to look at it from another position. Within a matter of, depending on how easily available skill they are, 
within a matter of two to three days, you have hundreds of CV. And these recruiters are handling, I would say, at least a minimum of 50, C, uh, 50 requisitions at once or 50 positions at once. So 100 into so much, and they have a lot of metrics to meet as well, right? So it is very difficult to sort of like, you know, um, for them to actually look at all the CVs. Um, with with the limited automation that's there as part of the applicant tracking system. So the idea is to be smart with your CV as quickly as possible, um, you know, make it easy to read uh, so that, you know, the few seconds that the recruiters sort of like their only main work right now is they have a position, they have CV, and if they, they just glance few seconds and say, okay, if there is something that appeals to them is when they move it forward, right? So that is the agenda. So it's important for you to make sure that you understand all the ecosystem, the people who are handling it before we sort of like look at CVs and stuff. Um, moving on. This is one thing that I mentioned a little bit earlier as well. Before you start your CV, one of the things, I think a couple of things that you can is research the job and the responsibilities that you're aiming to apply. Um, to give an example, I, I am actually originally a marketing professional, a marketing communications professional. But throughout my experience, I have also done core HR roles. I think I sort of it sort of like came my way. I did it. So I have extensive experience in you know recruiting, um, some amount of total rewards, some amount of employee engagement, but uh, when I am recently I changed my jobs right now, I'm with an organization handling talent branding or employer branding as they call it. But if I were to aim for an HR program manager role, I would make sure that my CV, you know, of course, I'm not lying because I have the experience. But when you actually when I put my talent branding HR program everything together in the same CV, basically you confuse the person who's looking at it. They, they wonder, is this person a HR program manager or is this person employer branding professional? So it's important for you to make sure that whichever role that you're applying for, you research it sufficiently. And so that you can uh, orient your CV according to roles and responsibilities to the job that you're applying for. You don't want to be seen as jack of all trades. So it's important to sort of like look at it. Another thing is, um, in the past, if you see some of the old CVs, you have something called objective that is quite redundant. Nobody uses that anymore. The objective for everybody is to get a job, you know, get into that role and stuff like that. What you need to do is have this three lines of elevator pitch. Um, it can be just a summary of who you are. What is that? In, if you were to talk to a person in three or four lines of what you do, uh, what is that unique selling proposition that you bring to the table uh, for that role, for whatever role you're applying? short line. I have a couple of, I think I have one example here in the rest of the slides. I'll probably just take you through in a little bit more, but you, know, you need to be prepared with that. And only then you can start sort of like really putting the CV together. And uh, this is the third point is the absolutely most important one. A lot of us do underselling. Uh, when I have these sessions with other people and I'm talking to them saying that, hey, can you quantify the achievements that you've done in this role? Of course, we don't want to talk about responsibility. We want to talk about what you did uh, that made a difference in that role. And everybody is at you know, blank is like, I did this, they're just making very, you know, a statement saying that I was responsible for this, or as I was part of this program, but they're not able to really articulate what was the result of it. So I think the best thing is to look at your performance reviews. I'm sure most of them would have, you know, at the end of the year, it is part of your uh, um, appraisal plan to make sure that you get the promotion, you get a good, I would say, rating. So you would have spent sufficient time to like really articulate um what you have done through the year make, pull that out make a list of all those um achievements that you've done in the past you can, if you can like really tweak it and you know look at some of those top skills of course you don't want to put all of it but some of those top things that you want to really showcase for your potential role that you're applying for um like I said, I think focus on creating some statements that is results driven. Um, we can just say I was part of this program, you know, that doesn't really say what you did, right? Uh, I'll talk about it in detail a little later. And one more thing is all of the applicant tracking system works on keywords. Um, a lot of recruiters, once they get into the system, they look at, okay, there are hundreds of CVs, but I need to make sure that the person who is in, I don't know, Java or .NET, that's a skill that I'm looking for. They'll just go 
and type in the Java or .NET and keyword and look at all the CVs that comes in that. So, or somebody who is who has a combination, I would I would say, um, who is a communication professional who works in the technology industry. So that's a combination that they probably are using. So it's important that you're talking about the skills that you're aiming for. It may be soft skills, it may be technical skills, but list out all the skills that, and in terms of priority and in terms of the role that you're applying for, um, you'll have to like really look at, you know, preparing some of these things before you actually start working on your CV. And one of the things that I missed all them, I mean, including my sister who made a mistake, um, getting a professional email ID. So when you actually put something like, I don't know, greenzings at gmail.com. <laughs> I mean, somebody was looking at it saying that, okay, you're a professional, you're applying, applying for a professional job. It doesn't see the name or it say, I'm too cool at gmail.com. I mean, we've, we've seen, you know, I've worked with recruiters and they're like laughing at the email ID that comes in. It doesn't convey the seriousness of the email ID. So it's important, keep a separate email ID for some of these things and make sure it is professional and reflects your name, ideally speaking. Um, and uh, of course, I think overall, see what is that you bring to the table as a part of your CV, you know, um, we, we cannot obviously be like the next person, right? I mean, there should be something that's unique that you can actually showcase in your CV. So that's the bigger part of preparation. Um, now I'm going to like move on to some of these things. Let me just pause there and see if we can look at these two CVs, I can see something on the screen, uh, Melky. I don't know what. Uh, arrows, is that? I don't think it's yeah, on the yeah, CV, I think, but I can see some arrows. Yeah, I think maybe uh, we would have just used the cursor to move, I guess. But never mind, I think. We just... I'll just go back to the previous one once again. Can I go back to the slide? It seems to be not moving. Oh, yeah, okay, moved. yeah, yeah, okay, great. So, yeah, uh, so here, if you look at two, both the CVs, um, just look at the sections, don't look at, you know, what is in it, but when you look at the CV, what is the impression that you get? Um, which one do you think is better? So, uh, people who think uh, the left one is better, can you raise your hands? <laughs> Or probably you can put it in chat, you know, just put left or right. Which one do you think is better? Obviously, right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I actually tried to do some animation to actually keep it one next to the other and not have the other appear, but I think you can actually see uh, the content of uh, bullets on the left side. So, so I guess, you know, you, you, the moment you see it, you realize that um, the right side CV, it has clearly defined sections. It talks about, it has a heading, uh, it has a crisp, I would say contact information. It has a summary on top. It talks about the skills then you have on the right side, you know, in one page, it covers a lot of things, right? Um, it covers the experience in a brief way, education, skills, just about everything. On the other hand, the left side, uh, you know, you have to literally, there is this flow of words. There is no, I would say some, some suddenly when you look at it, you don't really, you have to really read it to, to understand what, you know, what it's talking about to, on the other hand, on the right side, because it's broken down into sections and, you know, uh, clean lines and I would say bullet points, it's a lot more easier for you to um, understand. So I think the right one definitely wins. Um, and this is why, because of one is that it's a clean format, it has sections, uh, the person is using bullet points. And, uh, and of course, I think a couple of other things that I've mentioned here, um, I've tried to, I've tried to ke keep uh, the entire uh, slide set short. So some of the formatting I'm going to cover as I'm going along. So maximum of two pages is ideal for a professional, no matter how many years of experience you have. I don't think you should go beyond. I remember once I was looking at the CV, there were 10 pages of CV. It's absolutely, I think somebody who was obviously more experienced, I didn't know what to do with it. Um, I had three pages CV up until I would say seven years back. 
is when I realized that I really need to cut down. I was struggling to cut it down. Then I found a ways and means of cutting it down, which I'm going to share. Um, but um, if you're a graduate, I would say stick to one page. If you are a professional, you know, no matter how many years of experience, don't go beyond two pages. Nobody has the patience to actually go through all that you are sending uh, and, you know, uh, and trying to decipher and understand, right? So, um, and in, absolutely, there's a lot of people who make mistakes in the CV that shows that you're not paying enough attention, you're not interested. That's how it's perceived by a recruiter who's looking at saying that this person is really didn't bother to like look at what that person is writing, right? Uh, sometimes when you do copy pasting, you know, instances of error. So read, reread, um, ask somebody else to take a look at your CV because when you're looking at it multiple times, you tend to sort of like miss things. Um, accuracy is absolutely necessary. And, um, and also in terms of what titles you're using, um, like I said, you may have different kind of CVs, right? When you're orienting towards probably different roles, uh, but your job titles has to be the same. Um, in in uh, almost all the organizations, they do, they do a back verification. And if they find two, multiple, two different titles, of course, they're wondering, you know, which is the right one? Is the person really telling the truth or not? So it's absolutely necessary to tell the truth on your CV. Um, ensure that you're using clean fonts. Don't use too many different kind of fonts. Uh, try and keep it simple, uh, clean lines, spacing, um, and if possible, I mean, if you're not too very well versed with English, ask somebody else to take a look at it and see if you can cut down on content and text. Because I think as Indians, the English that we know, we use a lot of, I would say, additional words we use. And uh, we use the... Uh, so you can really cut down on the text if you were really paying attention and make it small um, in terms of the length of uh, the pages. Um, yeah, that's uh, brief. And then I'll just move on to different sections right now. Um, okay. I think it's, Melky, can you move please to the next slide? It's not moving for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, this is the main section. Um, and one of the things that I still see with resumes is a lot of people give the full address. Uh, I think for Western world I have very brief address. So even if included, it doesn't take too much of space. But, uh, you know, I know how our Indian addresses are, right? I mean, it runs up to four lines. So it does take a lot of, um, I would say, space and it's also not needed you don't have to and also right now a lot of that is uh, considered confidential information you don't want to you know make have your confidential information out there in the public so try and keep it brief um ideally what i do is i just say bangalore and the pin code and of course uh, the name contact details number absolutely necessary needed now um email id so these three is absolutely necessary how you want to put it uh, cvs and i have not stuck to a one single style of cvs um but ideally the one that i should write up front that is what works well uh, in most of the cases because you can accommodate a lot more thing when you actually break it down into you know two a table version of two columns um yeah, and I think uh, Eddie is going to be covering the LinkedIn part. Uh, we have um, one of the things the recruiters do as soon as they see their resume is, especially if I, I'm not sure how much for technical skills, but it, for a lot of managerial positions, they immediately go to the LinkedIn profile uh, and see if what they're saying CV is the truth, because that's a public platform and you know hardly anybody can lie without getting caught. Um, so it's important that what you put in your CV is what is there on your LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn profile has an opportunity to you know do a little bit more, uh, which I think Eddie will probably talk about and bring out a little bit more of your personality there. Um, Start your CV strong with a short profile summary. It can be, like I said, a career snapshot. If you see it here, um, this person is a marketing manager, so is talking about all the digital marketing, you know, skills, the tools he has, uh, what he has, you know, what work that he has done that is resulted in something, and what he is looking at. Um, you don't have to necessarily add that what he's looking at, but ideally to really talk about such summary. If you see the Jane Doe one, um, you know, once you have an access to the people, you'll see that it is basically a, a 
career snapshot. Basically, it talks about um, how many years of experience you have right up front. You can say, I have 10 plus years of experience in um, in the field of uh, marketing, HR, whatever, whatever, across industries in financial services, whatever, then uh, what background you have, um, if you want to bring in some aspect of your personality, something that you've done, um, probably as a volunteer, you know, what you're passionate about, you can add a line about it. So basically something that will make you stand out and make the recruiter look at a little bit more of your CV. And that's absolutely necessary right up front. Um, the top section and uh, the here in this format, I would not recommend you to add a picture because we're trying to sort of like avoid bias, right? I mean, when a person looks at a picture, it sort of like unconsciously forms a bias. So I would recommend don't put your picture. Um, this is something that I got from the net to just give as an example. Um, but yeah, you can absolutely include uh, social media in case you're active and you really want to showcase and the work that you're doing uh, needs to have some social media access and stuff like that. But otherwise, LinkedIn is something that's absolutely needed for most of the roles. Um, yeah, I think I have a few more minutes. I'll just try to quickly cover. Um, So the next section, uh, I have shown two different types of, I would say, format of CVs. You can either have the one on the one where, I, which is vertical on the left side, which is the skills, or it is, it is skills as well. If you go to your LinkedIn profile, it gives you an opportunity there also to add skills. So it can be a similar set of skills. Like I said before, ATS really works on keywords. And recruiters really are looking for keyword search half the time, whether it's on a job board or it's on their ATS. So wherever the recruiters are looking up information and searching for candidates, key, keywords is what matters. And uh, of course, we don't want to make it a laundry list. It's important that you have only um, key relevant skills. For example, uh, I know that I have uh, managed people, managed people in the past, but I am applying for an individual contributor role. So it is really not needed for me to like really talk about it. Probably I would put that right in the last if I need it. But I really would talk about the role itself. So the role, if it needs um, some digital marketing experience, some experience with tools. So all of those skills is what I'm going to talk about uh, rather than talk about everything. You know, uh, I'm excellent in English. Uh, you don't really need it. For some role, it is given. And especially if you have 10 plus of years experience, it's given that, you know, you have absolutely amazing, um, I would say verbal and written skills, uh, or if the role needs it, you need um, those skills. Oh, yeah, can you go back? Yeah. Um, so it's important to look at uh, making sure you are prioritizing your skills. This is why I said when you, before you begin your CV, you need to sort of like take stock what you've done, write it down so that it's a little bit more easier when you actually start writing this down. So include your technical and soft skills. Technical is needed, especially for the, if it's needed for a role. That's where I say whenever you're looking at a role, always customize your CV. You may not need to, you may need not do too much of customization, but for every role, if you have to have the impact, look at the responsibilities that's there. Does it match the skills that you have? Does it match the work experience you have? Are you using the same word? Because most likely than not, the recruiter is also looking at the same word in terms of keyword search. So it's important to sort of like look at it. And focus competencies and if you really want uh, you know you don't know how to sort of like you know pull out those skills you can use uh, you can go online and use the cloud word cloud generator so you can just give that and see if it helps you generate some of the skills that you can actually put it in uh, or i mean linkedin is a good source you can go look up somebody who has a similar profile and skills they've added on to their linkedin profile you can probably get some ideas there as well um moving on I think this is the most important section. And this is where most of us struggle in terms of how, how, how to really articulate this. Um, ideally speaking, you need to have your experience in the reverse chronological order. Um, the latest one first, wherever you're working first versus all the previous years. Uh, focus on our words. Um, 
what you need to focus on is here, what is the outcome of the work that you've done? Um, one of the things a lot of people do is just, when you go and look at a lot of CVs, they'll say, I'm responsible for so-and-so. So basically they're replicating the same job description that's there on a job on their profile, but it is not, everybody knows, like for example, most of them know what a communication professional is supposed to do. I'm giving a lot of Marcom uh, examples because that's where I'm familiar with. Um, a lot of people tend to really talk about the job itself uh, and in many cases, especially if you're experienced and even the recruiters know what a typical communication manager role involves. But what did you do in the role is something that you need to articulate. Saying I was, um, you know, whether you handle, like for example, when I was handling a communication role, I was responsible for a divestiture of 250 people from one organization to another organization. And I handled that uh, communication seamlessly um, and, uh, you know, the result was the customer satisfaction or the em employee satisfaction survey uh, was at 80%. You no, know, you need to quantify what you're doing, uh, the efficiency, it can be efficiency, if it is sales and marketing, you can quantify with, um, you know, I had increased that whole program by uh, X percent efficiency, or um, I increased my Uh, I increased my, um, you know, um, increased the sales targets by so and so, efficiency so and so. So you have to have results driven um, responsibilities or a job description, achievements, talk about your achievements. Um, what I have done is I've just, in, in some cases, the role may not be very. I would say clear for somebody. It may vary from organization to organization. In such a case. Add some two lines about the role, what I did, and talk about like four or five lines about the achievements or accomplishments. So, yeah, let me just quickly move on. The last section is the takeaways. Um, I'm sure there'll be a lot more questions, you know, in our QA session, but I just wanted to take you through all the sections of the CVs and, um, you know, if there's any questions, I can answer. So, a few things is like I said, you know, Start strong, your, your summary or a career snapshot is absolutely needed. Um, use action words, power words in your C. Talk about your accomplishments, achievements. Um, if, if you can quantify it, it's not possible to quantify it everywhere, but quantify it. That's where I said it's important to look at your performance reviews. Um, and even when you're doing your performance reviews or every time you do a major project, write it down somewhere so that you can use it at some point in time. Because many times you tend to forget what you've done, what you've accomplished in that moment, you will remember all that it is. Because the moment you put it on your CV, yeah, you're going to be asked in an interview. You should be able to articulate what is that you're responsible for. Um, so it's important to write it down somewhere and you know, it's something that you would need on an ongoing basis. Um, don't be jack of all trades, customize for the role, look at the role. Uh, a lot of people actually send the same CV over to hundreds of resumes. It's not going to work. Uh, it's important for you to target, identify the role that you're applying for, customize your CV as much as possible. Um, have it, you know, it's important to give attention to format, uh, keep it clean, crisp, and, you know, make sure it's accurate and you're telling the truth. Uh, pay attention to the naming of your CV. Many of the times I see people are saying, um, it's a, some random CV template. There is no name. Um, like I said, the email ID is important. It's important how you name your CV because you're going to be sending it. They're going to be looking at the file name as well, right? So that's important. Though a lot of folks say cover need letter is not needed in an Indian market, every job market is different. Like in US, they just need one. Um, they need only one page or a CV. In India, it's okay with two pages. I think in UK also I've seen it's two, K, uh, two pages is fine. But uh, but cover letter is absolutely needed in other, I would say Western countries, they really look up to having a cover letter. In India as well, uh, I would probably not say it's not probably as important for graduate, depending on if you're going through a referral. But if you're going through a referral, it's absolutely needed that you need a cover letter. And what you put in a cover letter is something that is not there in the in the uh, you know in your CV. It can be about your volunteering work. It can be about your additional capability. 
it can be that you won an award in sports you know basically it talks about what you've done over and above that talks about your personality and passion um that's what needs to come out in your cover letter so yeah that's a little bit about the whole cv i'm looking forward to more questions coming let me see if i can answer them um melky do you want to turn over to uh, eddie before we do the question answer or do we do the question answer now all right i think uh, uh, we can we can we can consolidate those questions uh, let me stop sharing uh, we can consolidate uh, the questions and uh, and at the end, we would have uh, time for answering questions. That's okay. So, meanwhile, uh, if everyone, you know, if you could, if you have any questions on any particular aspect, uh, uh, just just put it on the chat window. Uh, we will address that at the at, uh, after the next uh, segment, right? Uh, thanks, thanks, Rebecca. I think this was very useful. Uh, a lot of these things uh, could be new to us, and you know, for me. Uh, uh, so at the end of it, it's the ATS does the job. If you don't go past the ATS, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't make any sense how good your CV is. Uh, that was that was quite uh, news to me. Uh, yeah, so a lot of nuances. Uh, thanks so much. And I, uh, I believe you know, people will also have a lot of other questions. So yeah, please feel free to type in your questions on the chat and Rebecca would... Uh, uh, my, you know, she would she would also answer then and there. Rebecca, if you could just answer on the chat window itself for some other questions. Uh, sure, while, sure. Uh, you know, if, if people have, I think that would be really helpful. Okay, thank sure. you, thank you so much. And uh, so before we move into the next segment, um, uh, maybe we can just do a a quick. Um, uh, a poll, uh, if everybody on the phone or if you're on a computer, if you can log into uh, Mentimeter, I'm sure all of you are familiar with that. I'm just putting the link here. If you could just log into this, and I'm just going to just do a, a quick, simple word cloud. Uh, let's see now how that goes. Uh, and it can just take, take some time to stretch and uh, relax a bit. Um, All right. Um, if you're already there, um, Melky, the yeah. link if I click on, it's asking to sign in. Is that required? Sign no, up. No, sorry. you don't. No, you don't have to. Uh, you just have to. Okay, you just have to type menti.com. I'm sorry. Uh, that should be not my answer. Is there uh, any right yeah, let me put the link itself. I think this should work. Is there any? Hmm. Yeah. I think the because code is in the here. hyperlink itself. So I think yeah. if you copy paste that, that will work. Yes, I just did. Yeah, it, it's working. Melky, thank you. All right, perfect. All right, so what comes to your mind when you think LinkedIn? So let's, if you could just uh, type in your answers. Uh, let's see what, what are the things that comes to your mind. All right, connections, connect, look up others' experience. Yeah, learn from it. And we will get to know, you know where, where the world is heading to us. Professional, job, resume, social network. Linked into market. That's nice. That's a good... Uh, a promotional uh, word for LinkedIn. The new Facebook. Yeah, somebody said it's the new Facebook for all the CEOs. It's, they only post on, uh, you know, whatever they could post on Facebook, they maybe just post on LinkedIn. Opportunities, Wonder World, job postings, market oneself. Career, work, 
Okay, let's just give maybe another 30 seconds to see. Recruitment site. The new age knockery, I guess. Professional Instagram. Upskilling, market needs, infinite career platform. Okay, what else is it? They are slow to select. Uh, hmm. I can understand that a little bit. Uh, links employers and employ. All right, uh, job network. All right, so I think, good, thanks. Thanks for all your input. And I think it's uh, a lot of interesting comments as well. Uh, thanks much. Um, okay, I think we can, we can stop here and uh, let's move on to the um, session. Okay, good, thanks. Thanks everyone. And um, yeah, so before we uh, move to the next segment, we'd like to uh, introduce uh, Eddie, Edwin James, uh, we call him Eddie. Um, Right, as most of you know, uh, you know you would have seen him uh, in at Central Church. Um, you know, he's closely associated with the. And he's been serving with um, with the um, uh, APC worship team as a lead guitarist. Uh, has been around for a long, long time, and uh, you know, serving faithfully. And we're all blessed. Uh, we have been blessed through that, Eddie. Thank you so much. Uh, from the professional side of things, uh, he has about thirteen years of experience working as a customer enabler and a success manager with uh, organizations uh, like LinkedIn, AT&T, Akamai, uh, Freshworks. Um, he feels blessed to work for a company that gives uh, him the opportunity to be motivated and, uh, and excited several times a day, both professionally and personally. Uh, and in his current role, he partners with, uh, with a few of LinkedIn's largest global clients on the talent acquisition. Uh, priorities, equipping them to embrace digital transformation. Um, and I think we have the right guy here to talk about LinkedIn then. Uh, he loves spending time with uh, family and friends and playing music. Um, we are glad that you are here, uh, Eddie, and looking forward to um, uh, hearing you. Uh, thank you and welcome. Over to you. Thank you, Melky. Good almost afternoon everyone and Rebecca that was very insightful very excited to be talking to you all today uh, I hope there's something that we all will learn from today's session I'm going to start sharing my screen please let me know if you see my screen and we can get started from there you all see my presentation yes lovely great uh, I'd love for you all to be interactive so use the chat section to key in your thoughts I will be asking you all questions along the way uh, but what I would want you to do for the next at least 20, 30 minutes is forget about what you all know already about LinkedIn and come with an open mind. We'll try and absorb as much as we can. So we'll spend a little time understanding what's LinkedIn. I'm sure most of you all know what LinkedIn.com is, but I'd like to spend uh, you know, a little time telling you what's LinkedIn's vision. So this is LinkedIn's true vision. This is our true north. This is how we measure our success. It's about creating economic opportunities for every member of the global workforce. So if you look at the underlying meaning behind this, it's, it's all about helping people you know, with opportunities. Opportunities is a very subjective term. For some of us, it could be jobs. For some of us, it could be expanding our business. For some of us, it could be even networking. Now, all of us know that LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network, uh, but let me talk a little bit about what's this network made up of. And this network is made up of companies it's made up of members jobs skills schools and insights now the good thing about all of this is all these pillars that make the network interact with each other when i say members members consume jobs companies post jobs members add skills schools produce relevant skills and all of these things are ever evolving there are about two to three new members being added every second so you can imagine by the end of our chat today by the time it's one you'll have so many more new members added on the platform. Now, the good thing about LinkedIn is anyone can join the platform. It's free of cost and get started. But I'm gonna talk about something very important. It's almost lunchtime. Uh, so I will put this out there. What do you all see? You all will see food, donut. 
So the reason why I picked donut is again, we close to lunchtime and as Indians, we love sweets. So I'm going to use donut as an example and try and explain how can donut be positioned on a few other social media platforms and on LinkedIn so that you all will be able to draw parallels. So if I take donut as the topic and look at a few other social media platforms on Facebook, you'd say, I'd like a donut. Snapchat, you say, watch me eat a donut. Instagram, here's a cool photo of a donut. WhatsApp is more personal, right? Again, it's a social media platform, but it's more personal where you say, does anybody want a donut? But let's take donut and move that onto LinkedIn to see what does that sound like on LinkedIn, right? Now on LinkedIn, you'd notice that the voicing changes quite a bit. You'd say, I hope to operate a donut franchise. Here are my top skills in making donut production. Here are my recommendations for my former donut colleagues. I'm looking for a job in a donut company. You'd notice that the way we position donut on the other social media platforms and on LinkedIn is way different. Now, keep that in mind as we progress. Again, like I said, it's pretty straightforward. If you don't have a LinkedIn.com uh, or professional ID, you can just go to LinkedIn.com and sign up for absolutely no cost. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between resume and uh, LinkedIn. Uh, now, Rebecca called out great parallels between, you know, from her session about what's the importance of creating the resume or the perfect resume. Now, I'll be talking a little bit about how can you make your professional identity or LinkedIn look really good. But here are some basic differences between LinkedIn.com and a resume. A traditional resume is more static in nature. LinkedIn is more dynamic in, in nature. Uh, what really happens is there's an opportunity for you to actually speak to multiple employees at one go. It gives more detail into skills, into interest, into certifications, if you were probably part of some. And then also allows other professionals and employees to interact and contact you uh, and, and also get a sneak peek into some of the recommendations that are probably there on your profile. Now, this is where I need your help. So imagine with me that one day that you're all, all of you all get a connection request coming in from this profile one that says Tony and there's another profile profile two that says Rene. Now, if you have the opportunity to, to probably just choose one over the other, which one would it be? Would you choose to accept a connection request that comes in from Rene or would you choose to accept the connection request that comes in from Tony? Again, feel free to use the chat section to key in your thoughts. There's no right or wrong answer. It's personal choices, right? Okay, I'm, I'm watching the chat section. Thank you, Tisha. Thank you, Rebecca. Profile two. So this looks like an auction to me. I'm like rooting and looking at the profile on the right-hand side. And there's urge to say, Tony, absolutely right. It's personal choices and preference. You could choose to be a Rene, okay, you could choose to be a Tony. I'll wait for a few more seconds. Five more seconds. Lovely. Thank you for participating team and keep that chat going. Like most of you all said, Rene, I go with Rene as well. And, and it's quite obvious, right? If I have to choose one over the other, uh, and if there are similar profiles with similar background, it's it's probably because I would choose Rene over Tony because it looks more complete, uh, looks more professional. It's got a photo. It's got some information about it. Tony's profile, it's got some information, but I feel it's still quite Spanish in nature. And put your the recruiter hat on. As a recruiter or someone is, or a hiring manager would ideally, again, prefer a Rene over Tony because there's a lot more information to look at and probably qualify someone for a role. Now, again, like I said, it's a personal choice. You can choose to be a Rene or you could choose to be a Tony. The way you position yourself on the platform, it's left in your hands. There's not an agency or there's another person actually managing your professional network or professional identity. So again, you're going to be the one who's actually going to choose whether you want to be a Tony on the platform or you want to be a Rene on the platform. Now, the reason why I say that is because the number one activity on LinkedIn is, again, looking at people's profile. So it's important that we position ourselves in the right way, because ideally there are two brands that we represent. One, your own brand, who you are. And again, as, as we all believe that we want the excellent part of us to be displayed out there right and even the bible talks about it so it's important to kind of call that out to get your best foot ahead and represent yourself 
in the most optimal way on the platform. Otherwise, you can still choose to be a Tony, but you're going to be miss out, missing out on a lot of opportunities as such. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the tips and tricks that will help your story, your brand to stand out. And if you're also part of, again, brands in the, the company that you're working for, it's important to also represent that brand in the right way. So I'm going to be sharing a few tips that will help you amp your profile, speaking about specifics that will help you ace your game here. The most important one, the first tip that I have for you all is getting a photo. Now, again, back in the day, it used to be quite difficult, right? People used to go to a studio, get a photo click. All of us, I think most of us have great smartphones. We can get a good headshot that would do the trick. Now, the beauty of this is by getting a photo on our profile increases our profile views, connection requests, messages by a lot. So just by adding that one little element on your LinkedIn profile. So if you don't have a photo, you know what to do, go ahead and start by clicking on a good headshot would do the trick. And you also have filters and enhancers that will further amplify your profile. If some of you are struggling, what kind of photo? Again, a good headshot with good lighting would do the trick. That's the first tip that I have for you all. The second one, now I'm not sure if you all know this feature, but this is available if you have a LinkedIn app. Again, you can download the app on a nice store or a play store if you'd want. Uh, and there you can actually record your name. Uh, a lot of people tend to miss this. Again, uh, we sometimes if you work or we're planning to work with a global organization where you have partners across India or outside of India, sometimes it becomes difficult for them to understand and pronounce Indian names. So again, you don't want your name to be pronounced incorrectly. So again, there's a feature where you get to record your name in the best possible way. And you're again, helping your fellow connections to, um, you know, get connected and call you by the actual name, the way you would want it to be pronounced. This again is a very cool feature. A lot of people don't know this, but again, this is available only via the mobile app. So you can actually bring your profile to life through a short 30 second video. Now, the video can be something that introduces you and your story. Uh, so I suggest that you introduce yourself, talk a little bit about your passion and expertise, and consider ending that video with a light call to action. Now, call to action could be as simple as, you know, share your feedback with us. So again, message me if you'd like to chat. So I'd say show your personality trait through this, be conversational, show some excitement. And for example, when you're starting off the video by saying, hi, why don't you start with a wave? It's there's some kind of personal connect through that. The next tip that I have for you all on LinkedIn is adding the industry. Uh, many a times we tend to tag ourselves to some random industry. Go ahead and check if you work for a financial services organization, tag yourself to the right industry because oftentimes people identify and find you through industries. So again, by just adding the right industry, you become more searchable. And again, your profile views, your connection requests go up by a lot. The next tip for you all, for those of you who are looking for a change, there's this cool feature that says open to work. So you can actually go ahead and have that enabled on your own profile. Now you can enable this open to work feature by letting everybody on LinkedIn know that you're open to work by adding that green tag on your profile picture. Now, if you don't want to do that, I'm sure I agree that you don't want your own organization or certain members to know that you're looking for a change, but you still would want potential recruiters to identify that you're looking for a change. You could still do that without adding that filter against your uh, photo, but you can still make yourself visible as open to work only to recruiters. So just showing you a little background over what recruiters do. Recruiters, most of the recruiters around the world use LinkedIn to find candidates. Now they have a filter to only look for people who are open to work or open for looking for a change as well. So when you enable that, and when people search for specific skill sets and they identify your profile, they will know that you're looking for a change and there's quicker turnaround time. So I'd say take advantage of this feature that's made available to you. The next tip is summary, often ignored. Uh, I've been lazy about it as well. Uh, I used to like probably put a line or two, but I'd say this is very important because this is where you portray who you are in about 40 and 100 words. I call it as an elevator pitch. 
again, you need not really call out all the things that you've done, highlight your key accomplishments. That goes a long, long way. And again, the sweet spot is between 40 and 100 words. Try and complete your summary with something that you like to do apart from work, probably a hobby or, you know, again, humans are the ones who are connecting with humans on LinkedIn. Uh, if there's a common connection between you and the person who is connecting with you, it goes a long, long way. So take some time. I'd say invest time to complete your summary section. And again, okay, think of it like an elevator pitch. If there's a, like Rebecca called out, unique value proposition of yourself, if there are things that you want to highlight, use that to highlight it right here. The next feature uh, sex section is the featured section, which is available on LinkedIn. Now, this is like a highlighter where you can probably highlight some of your top uh, you know, content or showcase some of your proudest moments on LinkedIn. So you can share articles, you can highlight images, documents, or probably links that would help bring your professional story to life. So use this section uh, in a creative way that will really, really help you. I saw a few questions coming about, you know, career break, right? You can actually add a career break uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, sorry, before I move into that detailed work experience. So I'm sure all of you all, uh, some of you all called out that you currently work for an organization. So if you want to highlight what you did there, not really calling out every single thing. Again, like Rebecca called out, focus on tangible and you know actionable or probably those impactful moments. If again, there are certain numbers that you can put in there, again, it has to be publicly approved numbers. So be conscious of what you're gonna be sharing on the platform. Uh, highlight your work experience. If you work for a startup, go ahead and you know, probably highlight a little bit about what the company does so that, you know, you give your audience a little sneak peek into the organization as well. For those of you who are starting afresh, you're out of college, highlight your projects. Probably if you're involved in certain projects or so mock projects, put it, up, put it out there. It's a great way for you to highlight what you did and it sets you well for future success as well. Now, this is something that I wanted to spend a little time on experience. Again, when you fill in the experience section, your profile views, your connection requests and your messaging goes up way by a lot. So do this, don't forget that. Now this is a new feature and I saw a question that popped in, uh, you know, when, when you all filled in the registration form. Uh, for those of you all who have taken a break again, uh, consciously or probably because of the pandemic, I know the pandemic has actually brought this topic in the forefront. So some people are being forced to take a break because of mental health, well-being, to you probably attend to caregiving or even layoffs that have happened, right? But just letting you know, I want to share some stats with you all that recently we did a survey and about 62% of people globally uh, and out of which 64% were women who've actually taken a break, uh, you know, in their career part. So again, hiring managers or people in the business are aware of what's happening. And, and to be honest, hiring managers actually prefer that they get a view into what happened during the career break. Probably, you know, if you're open and transparent about what you did, if you probably spent time upskilling or probably spent time attending to a family need or just taking a break to reset and come back strong, if you call it out there, it goes a long, long way. Rather than, you know, trying to leave it out blank and then people trying to find out what you did in that time period of time. So again, call it out there. If you took a career break, it's absolutely fine to call it out. Businesses are evolving and they're open to actually accepting more of it. And just sharing this, 68% of people who are on our platform, that's about 800 and plus, plus million members, 68% of them have actually taken a career break in, in their professional journey. So don't shy away from this section. The next important piece, which is an extension of your profile is if you have had voluntary experience, don't shy away from calling out your volunteer experience. It could be as small as something that you're doing personally, but it goes a long, long way. It's a great way for you people to understand what you like to do and the impact that you're bringing to the community at large. Again, uh, a wonderful way for people to understand uh, and round off your professional network as well. So again, add your volunteer experience section goes a long, long way. Skills and endorsements. Now I'd like to spend a few additional minutes here uh, this is a very, very important section because skills, uh, there's a section dedicated on LinkedIn where you can call out the skills that you probably believe that you're an expert in. Now you can stack up skills as per your preference. Um, and when you stack up skills, you also give your connections, the people who are connected to you on LinkedIn, 
the opportunity to endorse those skills. Now, for example, if I added four or five skills in again on my profile uh, as the, my top skills, then my connections can actually endorse those skills and then add their plus one to it. Now, it's a great way for people to affirm what you are an expert at. Another thing that I want to talk about is there's something called take skill quiz. Now, on all your LinkedIn profiles, when you go to your skill section, you'll find a small little note that says take skill quiz or take a skill assessment. Now, let's say that I've entered, say, a Java as a skill, and I, I can actually take a skill quiz. And when I clear that skill quiz, I get a badge that gets associated to my profile. Now, mind you, these assessments or skill quizzes are quite difficult. So you need to prepare well before you take them. Uh, I thought I'm an expert in Microsoft Excel and actually took a test and failed. So I had to prepare really well and take that assessment again. Now, why do we need to do that? So it's an added weightage when you take a skill quiz because nowadays a lot of recruiters and business leaders are actually looking at people not just adding skills, that's one step, but a few folks who are looking for again, Looking to see who's best the skills we were adding in a lot more in the non technical aspect is when go ahead and uh, Eddie. Uh, Eddie, I think there seems to be a little lag for, at your end. Uh, yeah, we, we, we are not able to hear you well. Melky, probably you can share your screen. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I don't see it. And you can probably, uh, Eddie, you can switch off video if there is a problem with the network. Yeah. Melky, do you want to share yeah, the PPT? Yeah, let's just hear from Eddie. Are you able to hear us? We still can't hear you. Uh, I think probably chat. To yeah. yeah, maybe we'd want to rejoin. Yeah, or I think switching of video may help sometimes because video takes up a lot of bandwidth. Oh, I we got a message that uh, Eddie's system froze. So probably, Melky, do you want to like sort of like pause and take some questions and yeah, perhaps I can yeah. answer them? Then probably yeah. Eddie can join. Yeah. Yeah, so let's do that now. Uh, maybe uh, while Eddie comes on board. Okay, let me just... Uh, Milky, I've got some questions ready already, but uh, yes, there please are go ahead. so uh, I first of all, thank you, Rebecca and uh, Eddie and uh, Milky for organizing this. I can see Rebecca coming back again and again. Awesome job. Please keep it up. Um, so I've been trying to mentor some of the young folks from the church. OK, um, so and some of my friends in the you know apartment also. 
uh, i've seen there are people who are uh, like as rebecca sell uh, i mean uh, sorry as rebecca said that they are quite underselling themselves okay like i'm responsible for this responsible for that and then there is a fresher uh, pool of talents that i have been around who have been an let's say an excellent uh, rider you know going to kur galon going to mysore this that having club for, for of riders but because they need a job now they are coming into the corporate circle so when they uh, do the resume so there's not much to add i helped them as much as i could but i also found that there's a huge amount of opportunity of what rebecca said like if they are very active in social media that can be included so how do we do that in the resume that's one question okay i think eddie is back i'll try and quickly answer yeah. that <laughs> so uh, one of the things that helped me is um to sort of like sit with them and understand saying that what did you do like in this case like the example that you gave right for riders um in many cases you know i would encourage them to take like an online you know skill course uh, or do some sort of a freelancing work uh, to sort of like gain in that area where they don't have and they're aiming to get and they obviously uh, have a hard time breaking into it and of course when they're writing their cv they can probably talk about the skills that they gained by being part of those writers club you know organizing events i have experience organizing events so you can bring in those transferable skills into the cv and and that's where i think some of the cover letter like really helps wherein you can bring in your passion the background and you know how you can translate that into your workplace i think you can try and sort of like translate that in the cover letter so that may help i can probably go into more detail you know after we break into q and a session so i'll just hand it over to ani thank you rebecca thank you i'm so Great. sorry everyone uh, again a uh, small tip that i learned today never ignore your updates that pop up on your screen so if there's a pop up from microsoft saying update please hit update so otherwise you'll face what i did uh, so belki uh, if you don't mind could you give me host privilege so i can share my screen Lovely, thank you. I got post access again. I think I lost you all on the recommendation piece. Um, so often, often ignored. But this is the only section on your profile where you're letting someone else talk about your work and what you do. You can get recommendations from your leaders, from your managers, from your peers, or people who report into you. If you are just like moving out of college, get a recommendation from your professor. It goes a long, long way because. it's always good to understand what other people think about what you do uh and you know again it's it's a very powerful section where a lot of recruiters actually look at this section so for those of you all who already have some recommendations my question to you is when did you get your last recommendation if you don't have a recommendation in the last 6 months it's time for you to get one so don't shy away from this uh so be a little bold and ask for recommendations don't forget to add a headline and a background image now if you don't add a background image to everyone you would notice that there's a blue banner that would show up on your linkedin profile just above your photo now it's it's a default image but again think of it as an online real estate space you can actually use that to get very creative uh, you can use a brand of your organization to call out something or a message that you want to communicate what i did intentionally was i put a picture of my team there now the the message that i want to communicate to people who are connecting with me or who i'm connecting with is i'm a people's person so that's the simple message that i want to communicate so you can get very creative in this space and use that image uh, to your advantage that section to your advantage headline or a tagline is a vision statement um, i'm a customer success manager it's all about creating success stories a lot of people can use this section to call out something that they're passionate about uh again you can always change that over time and over season so use that section to get creative if you don't have one that's okay your job title will show up there by default this is the section that's just below your name on linkedin and then some important pieces that you should consider is tag yourself to the right location so people are able to identify you and find you uh education is important tag yourself to the college that you passed out from publications and accomplishments is again important pieces that a lot of recruiters pay attention to so take some time and i'd say rather invest time in this uh activity to complete your profile and you all will get some tip sheets that will come along with the recordings that will be hosted on our on our apc website so you can take advantage of that 
So in case you missed out on some of the sections that will help you complete your profile. Now, all that I spoke about right now is something that will help you amp that profile. Now think of it like this fancy car that you have, like a Ferrari that's locked up in the garage. But if you don't take that Ferrari out, there's no purpose, right? It's like this amazing car that's just been locked up behind the garage at the end of But now it's time for you to take that car outside. So that's exactly what we're going to do once we have a great profile. It's all about networking. So it's important that you network with people. Now, some of you might wonder and say, Eddie, who do I need to network with? Um, I'd say have a connection criteria. And when I say connection criteria, it's important that you need to think about quality over quantity. Now, a lot of people would say that I connect with thousands of people. It's okay, but think over quality because over time you're going to run out of space. And ultimately, you should understand that the people that you connected with is are they adding value to you? And in return, are you value adding adding probably adding value to them as well? So create that connection criteria that matters to you. The other element is curate your network time and again. So those of you who are starting afresh, you don't know whom you want to connect with. I started like this. I connected with people that I one I've been working with. I connected with people that I want to work with or you know, people from the industry that I aspire to be in. And then I started connecting with them strategically because my intent was to learn from them to see what they are posting. And in return, I believe that I was able to contribute to them as well. So if you don't know where to start, create this connection criteria. Again, it's very subjective. For some of you all, it might be probably quantity over quality. But again, for some of you all, it's probably quality over quantity. And Create those connection criteria and that will help you. And what we have done from a team perspective as well is also wanted to share you uh, one element that a lot of hires that happen, it's probably because 50% of the hires that we were able to see is because of personal connection that's 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 there on the platform. So again, the larger quant, you know, quality can is kind of- It is still having issues. I'll switch off my, is it that better? Fine. No, I think it was fine. Yeah. Uh, okay. So the other piece that I want to talk about is again, like I said, you know, you have, uh, you know, you, you create this connection criteria and you start connecting with people. There's something called the, the power of networking or what I call it as the ripple effect. For example, let's say today I'm connected with Melky, who's everybody knows Melky and I'm connected with Melky on LinkedIn. Now, if I'm posting something on LinkedIn or I'm putting out a request, Melky gets to know that. Now, let's say that Melky reacts on my post, okay, or probably likes it or comments on it, what will happen is Melky's connections will get to know that. For example, let's say that Melky is connected to, uh, I'm going to pick a name from the thing, let's say Melky is connected to Arjit. Now, Arjit will get to see what I posted purely because Melky acted on it. So that's called the ripple effect. So when you're posting content, and I realize that some of you are asking that, is it important to post content? Uh, how often do I post content? Now, think of this in this fashion. If you are posting something and your first degree folks are reacting on it or probably commenting on it, there's a chance for it to become viral just because your first degree connections like to comment on it. So that's the power of network. The other element that I wanted to spend a little time on is if in case you don't know how to network and I'm struggling with this section, I'd say on your LinkedIn profile, there's a section that says my network. Click on my network and there's a little bit of AI and machine learning that will help you tap into, you know, friends and family, current employees and colleagues, and probably even former managers and current managers. So it's a great way for you to connect with people. Uh, and again, the algorithm will proactively say and suggest certain connections that you can probably, you know, connect with ultimately. This is something that I want to spend a little time on. And, uh, and, and like Melky called out, like, and, and some of you also called us saying that it's a uh, LinkedIn is like the place as a C, uh, the CEO's Facebook. Uh, to be honest, I, I believe in one factor that everybody is a leader by in, in how, whatever capacity. It does not mean that you need to have a manager title, but all of you are leaders in your own capacity. So again, and the good thing about this is we are so unique as humans and God's made us beautifully and wonderfully that we all come with uniqueness, which means we call out, we come with expertise and skill sets that are quite unique to the others. Probably we have the same job title, but we still have a unique flavor to it. So again, the platform gives you an opportunity to actually share some of your unique expertise. So you could share about something that you like. You could be as genuine as I am sharing my work experience working in an organization, 
or you could be as simple as sharing uh, a topic of interest. If some of you are interested in technology and business, that's right on top, followed by finance, you can call out and add your two cents to it. Now, it's not always that you need to spend time creating your own article. You can also reshare an existing article that you found interesting and add your two cents to it. Now, why am I doing this? A lot of people are looking for connected people. Like, I think there was a question, wonderful question that someone asked saying, Eddie, uh, you know, I'm active on LinkedIn, just that I don't post content. Now, is it okay to be like that? I'd say it's okay to be like that, but let me tell you something. If you really want uh, a deeper skin in the game and you really want to stand out amongst a lot of other people, uh, you have to be quite active and people are actually craving for connected leaders on the platform, which means people are paying, going to pay attention to what you're going to post. Um, and I'd say don't shy away from this, especially if you're struggling posting content, uh, reshare some articles, add your two cents to it, and then share it. You'd be surprised that sometimes you might say, Eddie, nobody's reacting, nobody's commenting on it. It's okay. But there's actually a section under every post that you push out where you can actually look at statistics. You'd find a lot of people are silent followers. You'd actually see that your post would have actually got about 3,000 odd views, but just that it didn't get connections or probably likes and comments on it because probably you know your article or whatever you're going to push out is not resonating with that audience, but still the reach is quite high. That's where you can actually look at the content that you probably pushed out on the platform and then retweak your approach. A lot of recruiters and hiring managers are paying attention to what how people are active and what was the latest activity that was being pushed out. And like Rebecca called out saying that, you know, a lot of people have include their LinkedIn profile on resumes. As hiring managers, they like to get an authentic view into what kind of person this person is, what's kind of leadership style that this person has. They get that view looking at your LinkedIn profile. So again, spend some time and be bold pushing out content. Another very hot topic on LinkedIn is how do I search for jobs? Now there are multiple ways of searching for jobs on the platform. I'm going to be spending time on all of these elements because I feel this is very important. It's helped me as well. Uh, and pretty much the last element in this piece, the first step that I want to share is open to work, right? Like I called out, uh, uh, you know, the, some stat that I want to share about 34 million plus members uh, looking for jobs every week on the platform. So the first, Easiest element is adding the open to work feature that's available on your own LinkedIn profile. You will have access to this content. So in case you know how to how you want to activate it, you just need to click on your profile picture and then it will prompt you whether you want to look, activate this feature and get started. That's the easiest way for you to let your network and recruiters know that you're looking for a change. The second important element is you search for a career opportunity. Now on LinkedIn.com, you need not have a fancy access. You just need to go to LinkedIn.com at the search bar, click on jobs and then type the job that matter to you. You can start off with the keyword job title company and then progress it. And you can also apply filters to get to that ideal job that matters to you. That's another section that you can take advantage of. The other element to automate things, I believe we believe we will live in an environment where it's, we prefer instant things. Um, so you can actually create job alerts that will reach you proactively. You can set an alert on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, and you get notified by email uh, where there are certain jobs that match the criteria that you prefer. So you can create job alerts on the platform as well. That makes things a lot easier. This is something that I want to spend a little time on where it's called jobs you may be interested in. Now, this is where the AI or the artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities of the platform come into play. Now, based on what you entered on your profile, remember I spoke about entering work experience skills on your profile. Now, that's super important because a lot of companies, when they're pushing out jobs on their own company's ATS, uh, like Rebecca called out and on LinkedIn, what's happening is these jobs are actually looking for people with these skills. And then when these jobs find people with these skills, these jobs are automatically recommended as jobs you may be interested in. So when you go to your LinkedIn.com, click on jobs, there's a section that says jobs you may be interested in. And there you notice there are a bunch of jobs that are showing up there. This is purely based on what you have actually put in there, based on your preferences, based on the kind of skills that you have on your profile. So especially for those of you who are wondering, saying that LinkedIn is too slow in terms of you know, getting those jobs or I'm not able to progress it pretty well. It's probably you need to probably amp your game a little bit in terms of completing your profile, which means you're getting more relevant jobs and the progress is much faster in that way. 
The next piece is follow companies that matter to you. Uh, again, if you're really interested in joining a specific company because of the culture or because of you've heard a lot about that organization, go ahead and follow the company page because it's important to stay on top of what's happening within the organization. And on the back, on the back end, recruiters are also looking at people who are actually following a company because if someone's following the companies because they're interested in recruiters would love reaching out to these people and because they understand even they have a quick turnaround time to fill in positions. So do this as well in a calculated way. Another tip that I want to share with you all is explore alumni. If you're passed up from an organization, it's a great way for you to actually go to your own uh, you know, college page, page or university page. Look for people that who's probably studied with you or your seniors, your juniors. And again, a great way for you to leverage that connection to get the desired job that matters to you. That's something that I want to share. Last few pieces that I uh, want to share with you all is there's a lot of great content that's available to you. Uh, there's, a, there's a site called opportunity.linkedin.com where we have identified 10 most uh, like popular jobs uh, and which where there are a lot of job openings in the last four years. So what we have done is we have actually opened up LinkedIn parts or learning and upskilling material where you can do all these courses free of cost so that you are better positioned to nail the job that matters to you. So again, uh, LinkedIn learning is actually a paid element uh, where businesses spend a lot of dollars getting that and then you know making that available to their employees to upskill. But what the company has done is also identified these top in-demand in skills and we've opened up certain LinkedIn learning courses to upskill you. So something that will, that you can take advantage of. The other element is again, you can master critical soft skills if you're not interested in certain technical elements. This is also something that's going to help you nail the next game or next uh, play and whatever you want to do if it's not technical in nature. So something that you can take advantage of and that's made available to you as well. And the other element that I want to share with everyone is there are a lot of resources that will help you prepare for your interview. So in case you're struggling and you're looking for tips and tricks about how do I nail my next interview? A lot of things are digital these days, right? online. How do I make sure my digital body language is in the best possible way, presentable way? And some top 26 behavioral questions and interview questions. So these are some tips that are made available to you again. Uh, you just need to probably go and access this website and then take advantage of what's in it there. Something that will help you nail and prepare for your next game. And last but not least, join groups, especially if you are after specific roles uh, and uh, there are a bunch of groups and, and like-minded people who are part of those groups. So when you're part of these groups, it will help you probably explore beyond jobs, explore beyond networks. One is to have those conversations within that group. And then you also have opportunities that would pop up. For example, if I'm a data scientist, I'm looking for jobs in data scientists, and I'd love to connect with people who are data scientists, join a group, joining a group is free of cost. There's no uh, cost involved in any form or way. So join groups that matter to you and then build that connections and networking, uh, you know, that happens in that group. It's again, I call it like a double-edged sword. One is you get benefited out of what the conversation is happening in the group. The other way is also you get to add to that. So today you probably are looking for a job. Tomorrow you probably will help someone, you know, get that job that matters to them. So again, that's pretty much what I had and, and wanted to share with you all uh, in terms of knowing a little bit about LinkedIn, some key elements on how that can amp your own LinkedIn profile. And then there are certain elements that will help you nail your next job. So with that, I'll hand it over to Melky and we'd be happy to take any questions that are there. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. I think that was very helpful uh, to the smallest things. Like uh, I never knew, you know, you can record voice and videos in your profile and all of that. Uh, thanks much. And I think that was really helpful. Uh, yeah, uh, I think next 30 minutes or so, you know, we would uh, spend time in Q&A. So if you have questions, please uh, type in your question in the chat window. And uh, I would uh, I would be asking those questions to Eddie and uh, Rebecca. And yeah, if you have any questions, just raise your hand and I can, we can just go one by one. And we also have some questions that came in the, as part of the registration. Uh, and I guess you know we have answered a lot of those questions uh, as part of the session, so we wouldn't be revisiting some of those questions. But those which are not answered, I will be calling that out uh, in this uh, session. I see some of the hands going up already. But before we uh, we get into uh, 
uh, the Q&A session. I just have, I'll just take maybe just about one minute to share some information and then uh, we would uh, get in the Q&A uh, session. So yeah, um, um, so yeah, so just, just now as we heard uh, about LinkedIn, yeah, I can connect with uh, Edwin, Eddie and Rebecca on, uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, if you need any support in the future, you can get connected with them. Uh, we also have our uh, APC uh, website, um, in our, uh, sorry, LinkedIn page um, available. Uh, so please follow. Uh, we post a lot of uh, you know, professional uh, biblical principles. Um, and I think it's, uh, I mean, it's a wonderful platform for us to share, uh, you know, the professional principles that are based on the kingdom values, right? Um, so we do a lot of posting and, and if you could just follow and share some of those uh, posts uh, and I think we can better use those uh, platforms to share the kingdom values as well. Um, I think you would find the link in the chat window. Um, uh, please click and uh, uh, if you can follow that would be great. Uh, we also have um, you know, uh, an email ID professionals at apc.org. What we also do is uh, um, you know, if you have job openings in the companies where you work, um, please share on this email address and we can share it to the people who are looking for jobs um, and help people within the within our church. Um, or if you are looking for a job, please share your resume. We'll see how we can connect you with people within the church in the respective industry. Um, or if you need any help in counseling or you know in, in your profession or career or business, uh, please drop in a note. We can connect you with our respective experts uh, from the industry uh, in our church, and uh, they'll be happy to support you. Uh, and, and same goes with the prayer support as well. And a uh, last uh, information is that we have uh, a professional's life group that happens uh, twice a month, uh, first of the third Saturday um, at Be Thoughtful. Um, uh, this is this is a, a center that, that's on a business uh, center that is owned by Corona. Um, I'm sure some of you are aware of it. Uh, this, this is at Koramangla. So people in around Koramangla or you know, if you're able to make it um, on the first and the third sat, uh, Saturday, please drop in a mail uh, to my email address, melkizidek.apc at gmail.com. Um, I can help you connect uh, with the team uh, there. Um, yeah, so without any further delay, uh, maybe we can just quickly drop into the Q&A session. So uh, Rajiv, over to you, uh, please go ahead and you can, you can unmute and ask a question. Okay, so uh, very, very thankful to all of, uh, uh, who have shared and thank you very much. Um, so I have one small question. See, we have experiences in many areas, but now there are many learning platforms where we upskill ourselves. Uh, for example, we may not have a supply chain experience, but we get a certification in that area or we learn in that area. So how do recruiters uh, see those upskilling uh, uh, information which we have in our CV, uh, which are relevant to the job roles? Uh, that is question number one. And how does uh, recruiters see sabbatical uh, per se? These are the two questions which I have. Okay. I'm guessing that's for me. Um, so, so the first one is um, your upskilling, right? I mean, that's the reason I keep saying that when you apply for a role, you look at the role and uh, customize your CV accordingly. So if you're upskilled and the skill is relevant for that particular role, my suggestion is to make sure that you make those tweaks or modifications to include that you have upgraded yourself in that skill. Uh, that definitely adds value. And uh, the second one is the career break, right? I mean, I think in the past, there was a lot of, I would say, stigma around, uh, you know, taking a career break. But it's not, not the case now. There's a lot of people who, or the recruiters, I think, would not like really, uh, I would say, though in terms of, you know, in India, I would say some amount of uh, stigma has to go, especially if it's a male candidate. They always wonder why did the person take a break. But if you have a relevant reason, you know, it may be, uh, that, you know, you have taken a break to support, you know, your ill parents. I mean, I have come across some reasons like that, or um, you want to pay attention at work and, you know, you want to take a break because of whatever personal reasons. So as long as you're able to articulate that, it is fine. Or if you've taken a break, 
so that you want to switch careers, right? I mean, when you're trying to switch careers, you would have upskilled yourself, you would have taken a course, uh, whatever you've done. So make sure that you're articulating that either in your CV or in your cover letter and be able to communicate saying that, you know, the, the break that I took, uh, you know, was completely not a waste. <laughs> there may be reasons that is personal, which you cannot, you cannot avoid it. But uh, you can probably say that you've kept, uh, you know, kept up with the industry trends, you know, what's happening currently in the market. That's what they're looking for, right? The main reason for the recruiters to sort of like, you know, be apprehensive about people who are in a career break is, are they going to like come into the organization and need some handholding? Because they need somebody who can start work immediately. So as long as you're able to communicate saying that, no, I can scale up or I've kept up with the trends, it will help to sort of like convey and say that, you know, I can do the job. So that that should help. But I would say right now, there's a lot more, I would say recruiters are looking at, at it a little bit more, uh, I would say not being judgmental about the career break like before. Thank you, thank you, Rebecca, thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. There's, there's a question for Eddie, and I think that's, uh... Uh, that's a question that all of us have. Uh, is it must to have a premium registration for optimum exposure? And it's not very cheap. Huh? <laughs> it's very good question. And I get that quite often. Um, and, and if I have to talk about exposure specifically, uh, just because you have a premium um, LinkedIn profile does not mean that your profiles would get a lot of visibility. Uh, the, the ultimate fundamental you know, data is you should have a complete profile, regardless of premium access or no, because that's what is ultimately going to matter in the end. Uh, what does premium, you know, do if you have premium access? One capability is you get to, you know, send out messages to people who are not connected with you. That's one. Uh, about five in mails is what we call as uh, that you can send out. The other one is get access to some certain learning material that's available through LinkedIn, a few courses that are opened up through that as well. So these are few advantages that you have because of premium access, but from an exposure standpoint, not at all. Your simple LinkedIn.com plan, plain vanilla profile will do the trick for you if you have it complete. Perfect, thank you, Eddie. Uh, good question to Rebecca. Uh, how do you manage career gaps? Maybe you answered in part, but then maybe if you can just be a little more specific in your uh, how do we handle career gaps in that resume? So I, I think you need to be intent about what you're going to do in the career gap, right? I mean, if, if you are at some point are planning to come back to the workforce, the idea is to make sure that you're constantly in touch with the market industry trends or whatever role that you're going to be aiming for. Upskill yourself. You know, there's a lot of free... I know there, there may be some personal challenges, but there is a lot of online free courses available. Um, you can probably do some, you know, now there's a lot more opportunity to do that, you know, freelance in some areas that you're trying to probably break into, um, you know, uh, and uh, network with people. Uh, I would say try and see if you can get a mentor in that field, you know, if you can get hold of somebody who is currently in that field, who can guide you in terms of what direction you want to take, uh, if it is, you know, transitioning roles. But I would say, you know, keep up with the market, upskill yourself um, and network, you know, to, if you want to get back into the workforce, I think that's, that's how you try and manage your career break as, you know, as better as possible. <laughs> I did that, right? I mean, I did, I think it's a lot of things that I, I um, you know, I took a sabbatical of one year to study full time mid career. That is, uh, you know, obviously um, difficult to decision to take, but uh, it, it taught me a lot of things, I would say, about networking, right? I mean, one thing a lot of us, uh, I would say more than men, women tend to sort of like not network. We just want to remain in our own shells. Uh, so it taught me a lot of things about, you know, keeping in touch with the industry, stand, uh, you know, trends and keeping in touch with colleagues, networking, because nothing works like a referral does, uh, especially if you're an experienced professional. And it's also, not, I mean, I also don't like when somebody, you know, is very, they only reach out when they need something from you. That's not a good thing, good feeling to have. So I would say, you know, keep the network, keep connected. Mm -hmm. That sort of like helps you transition from that break over to, you know, back into a professional workspace. Yep, thank you. Uh, yeah, there is uh, there's a question for Eddie. Uh, I how to operate your networks for referral in the organization they relate to. Melky, I can just uh, explain yep. Raji again. Yes, please go ahead, yep. <laughs> See, there are uh, times when you have a, a network and you enjoy, you know, getting in touch on LinkedIn. 
uh, <clears throat> why there's a time when you see a job on a portal and you also <clears throat> think that how to approach the person who, I, who is in your network whom you don't know while you also request want a request to refer, refer yourself. So sometimes I feel that many people, including me, uh, don't like if a person directly comes and say, please, can you please refer me? So is there any better way which, you know, <clears throat> we can position ourselves or pitch ourselves, uh, which is like, maybe I may not know about it. That's why I'm asking. People maybe, uh, means, like, means who are in HR may ex uh, have a more understanding. So that was my question. Hope I'm able to communicate. Absolutely, Rajiv. Uh, uh, to be honest, uh, like, like there's no one silver bullet that does the trick. Uh, it's very subjective in the way you approach it. But something that I have done personally is I have had these connection requests come in from people who are connected with me and then there's a request saying that refer me in, in an organization that matches to you. The way that I've handled it is, uh, again, I'm, I'm busy with my work and if there's a random question that says refer me in your organization, the question that I always ask is, can you tell me what specific role you're after? Can you send me that link? And the question that I ask the person is, do you match every criteria that's mentioned there uh, on that job request that's there? Uh, oftentimes, you know, there are a few folks who have that all the boxes ticked off, which means, which means, you know, when all those boxes are ticked off, which means that match the criteria and qualification criteria, it becomes easier because there's also a lot of benefit for the people referring as well within the organization. Because if the referral goes through this, there's, there's some bonus or so there's some recognition that happens. So I always ask people who reach, reach out to me saying that, hey, refer me, I'd say, what position? And you match all the criteria that, that are must-haves. And even if there's a compromise saying there's something or the one or two that's missing, I openly tell them that you know they are not looking for people with your specific skill sets that that you claim that you you have on your profile and such. So that's something that I work with and that's worked well. I hope that that helped you. That will help you, Arjun. Thank you, thank you. Just to add to that, one more thing that you know it's helped me is when I reach out to. I mean, I have done this when I was looking for opportunities. Is um, you know you go to the LinkedIn profile. And you have second or the third connection. You know, if you're connected, I would say ask somebody uh, from your network to introduce them. And or if you're directly approaching them, be polite and nice um, and see if you can connect. Saying that, hey, I see that we are connected on, I would say, XHP, you know, alumni group. Or, you know, we share the same interest. Um, and, you know, just give something so that you can establish that connection when you send that email uh, and be polite and nice and give them an out. I usually give them an out saying that I'm reaching out to you for this referral. You know, please let me know if it's OK. If it's not OK, also, it's fine because, um, you know, not everybody is looking at emails and certainly you have to lose somebody you don't know and, they, you know, you're asking to refer. It is a problem, but it's always good to sort of like go through network because, you know, you know somebody, they know somebody. So it may be, you know, a lot more authentic versus some random person coming. And it goes both ways. I mean, if somebody is reaching out to me, am I, you know, doing the same thing versus, you know, you know, I'm, am I giving back? So I, I try and sort of like look at both ways. And, you know, if somebody is not really interested in connecting with me as a person, they just want something out of me, it, it may put me off. So it, it works both ways. So I think you have to be a little bit more sort of like how you can connect with the person when you reach out to them. I think that may help. Thank you. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Um, yeah, maybe God. Rebecca, one more. Sorry. Somebody saying something? I know, Melky. I'll, I'll just wait till you finish. Arijit here. Uh, yeah, I'll just maybe uh, ask one question to Rebecca that came from the registration and then RG will come to you. Uh, so somebody asked this question, like I'm looking for a job after 17 years. Uh, like, is there any guidance? How, because, you know, obviously it's a new thing, right? For them <laughs> looking for a new job and stuff. So is there any suggestions in terms of the resume, how they can position stuff like so there must be a reason that they have taken a break of 17 years, right? They're I not mean, a break. Uh, they're looking for a uh, job after 17 years. Like they're not after 17 years. Oh, oh so they're employed. And yeah, yeah. so I think, uh, see, one of the things, you know, whatever said and done, uh, there is age bias. So if we're <laughs> too old, uh, you know, I know, you know, there's a lot of articles also. It's very difficult for people who are like experienced and with one organization uh, to find a job. My sister is looking for a job. She's facing that. She's been with one organization for far too long. So there is some amount of saying that the person will not fit into another organization, you know, the cultural differences and 
organizations are also truthfully speaking are looking for entry level professionals and they will you know they're wanting to let people grow within the organization so uh, my suggestion is if you can sort of look at rather than talking about overall years of experience saying that i have 19 plus 20 plus 17 plus years of experience i would say give the scale but bring all your accomplishment in the first page so as soon as you do your you know your uh, summary your address and you know the left side you have skills your first page should have a list of accomplishments that is aiming for the role that you're looking for and and the next page can have your experiences what i usually do is cut down the number of years of experience towards the end like i have last four years of experiences saying that i have additional i am and i'm saying that you do quote all your experiences mainly because it is used to sort of like scope for your compensation so you know don't sort of like say i only have 15 while you have like 19 years so something like that so i would say add your okay i have 3 plus years of experience in the field of so and so just some two lines towards the end but i would say keep your latest two or three role experiences up front um, and talk about your accomplishments right up front um so that you can show your seniority you know you're not like giving them an opportunity to come up with the bias i mean sometimes there is unconscious bias and they may just sort of like look at it saying that okay it's too senior i don't want to consider and things like that so that sort of like may help uh, if you're a veteran and you have experience then you're looking for a job but i would say if you're looking at your cv now you would definitely need to spend about at least a week to sort of like you know do a research you know prep uh, you know do different versions or tweaks of your cvs um, and probably orient where you want to go like sometimes what happens when you have 15 or plus years of experience there are so many things but you know you may want to customize and say i want to be in a leadership positions in technology or whatever right so try and orient your cv in that space rather than you know have everything at once so you may have different versions saying that okay i'm aiming for a leadership position i'm aiming for technical position have like two three versions of cv i would say two is ideal so so use some of those strategies in order to get your foot in the door you are just talking about uh, the years uh, is is that a good thing to put uh, some of them put the date of birth on their resume is that is oh that... absolutely not <laughs> yeah i didn't mention some of these things because uh, i think a lot of people know by now don't mention that you're married or single and all of that and don't mention your date of birth um you know, you know whatever said and done picture date of birth or all that sort of like adds to your unconscious bias you don't know who's going to be looking at your cv at the other level and in the person who's looking at it may also not be aware that they have bias so don't use you know just to make sure that you're you're giving yourself the best possible opportunity to get your foot in the door <laughs> yeah sure somebody somebody had asked a question okay i'm i'm looking for a job after 40 No, I'm 45 years old. I'm looking for a job and stuff, and I think uh, they would have got some insights around this. Thanks, thanks much, Arjit. Uh, quick, quickly to you, uh, yeah. If we can just ask your question or the uh, points to share. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I have got two, three. Actually, I'll make it very uh, snappy. Quick. Maybe just one, uh, maybe, uh, because we have other questions. Uh, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. Okay, so uh, this one uh, is for Rebecca. so um rebecca where you are saying that uh, we should cut all our um, you know experience and you know even i personally use only a one page cv that is uploaded in linkedin as well as in my company profile but if i want to broaden my horizon and if i'm planning to uh, keep uploading my uh, different different technical projects let's say if i have a, a field like a, for example a website and if i include that a link that this is what i do uh, additionally to my whatever has been written in my cv you can visit my website it's a paid domain which i maintain to showcase my talents so how does a recruiter look at that i think that that's definitely helpful right i mean especially if you have and uh, the thing is they will first look at your cv so if you get gain their interest in the cv then it can always lead them to other places saying that okay here is my social media link here here is my website i can go and take a you know you can definitely offer a little bit more detail if you know to uh, showcase the breadth of your experience and you know, your skills um that would definitely help um but i think it's important first thing is like you know making sure that this look at your cv but you can always give an option to give additional information on social media or your website that definitely helps thank you rebecca thanks rebecca 
Eddie, uh, one question on the yeah on the business side of things. You know, this uh, I think it's from Corona right now. How how do we use uh, LinkedIn uh, effectively for businesses? Uh, Absolutely, uh, there's there's a lot that you could do, but uh, I think from from a starting perspective, it's simple to get a company page. Again, company page is something that you can create free of cost, similar to uh, a personal. Uh, LinkedIn profile. And what you can also do after that is if you have a team or other employees who are working for your organization is to ensure that they tag themselves with the company page. And then company page, you can use it to portray your unique value propos proposition, the services, testimonials, and whatnot. It becomes like a website. The next step that I want to share is try and get followers organically, which means get the people that you're working with to start sharing that page and start putting in content within their whether your employees or you can start re-sharing content from your company page, ultimately making you know fans and followers. So once you grow your follower base to a sizable number, then you know you you probably can use that page to gain more businesses, get more partners, or again even probably employ people that matter to you. Uh, again, all of this can be done without spending an additional dollar uh, or a rupee, which means you can actually go and start a company page and get that started. And from a from an approach perspective, whatever you do on your on your profile, which means you need to have it complete, you need to use that profile to reach out and do your, you know, ultimately go network. You do it a little differently here. You complete your company page and use that company page to promote content from the page. So that will help you as well. All right, thanks, thanks, Eddie. Um, any any questions from the uh, people, uh, for the participants out here? Uh, uh, Manji, I have one more question. If I yes. heard correctly, that uh, need not put the years of your total experience on your CV or your LinkedIn, also your date of birth. So date of birth I could understand, but is years of experience also not recommended? No, no, no. I did say put, don't put your years of experience. What I'm saying is when you put your experiences, right, like saying that I worked in, I would say, HP from 2017 to 2020. What I'm saying is talk about those experiences. You don't have to go it in, in detail. So talk about the last three or four, because I don't think in two pages you can accommodate all the years of experience, all different companies that you work with. Right. So I'm okay. saying at the end of it, at the two, like probably the last initial career, right, when you would have probably started as an executive or you know some of those experience you can summarize and add it towards the end is what i'm saying but it's okay. important to really talk about years of experience because you know obviously you don't want to really kill your seniority and also for compensation sometimes they do really look at the seniority saying that how many years of relevant experience do they have and of course okay. again relevant experience matters saying that the role that you're applying for all the years of experience what you have is it relevant if it's relevant, it makes sense to mention. If it's not relevant, I would say, you know, summarize it somewhere and leave it as a, like a footnote so that you're still conveying the truth, but, you know, you're only aiming for the role that you're applying for. Thanks. Right. And just talking about experience, Rebecca, so a lot of people have this short, I mean, they would have worked in, uh, you know, four companies in five years, uh, right? Or, you know, switch jobs every two years and three years, right? Uh, so is that something that is an advantage uh, or does it, you know, uh, how, how do you I see would that? Say Things are changing, Melky. Earlier, uh, you know, recruiters to say, okay, if the person is switching jobs a lot more than, you know, it is a problem that they, more, they may not stay. Uh, there is no loyalty to the company and all of that. Uh, so I would be wary of somebody who is like switched between six months, six months, six months versus somebody who's at least minimum of two years in one organization. Because I think early on in your career, people tend to change jobs, right? And the market is also such that, that you know, people want to hire them. They need those resources so it doesn't matter too many times as long as you know the person whoever is interviewing can convey the reasons of change saying that why did they change is it authentic is it appropriate um if they're able to justify that i think it is fine but uh, yeah i mean if it is just six months then you know i think anybody would question but if it is just uh, in the Many times what happens is in the initial years, right? When you're starting off your career, you may have six months, one year, two years. Then we see sort of like more loyal people to one organization once they're comfortable with the organization. So that's, that's usually the trend. So I think recruiters do understand to a certain extent, but I'm sure they will probe um, and ask what's the reason behind it. Yeah, sure. All right, quick question to Eddie. So is there, what percent of organization actually end up making offer through 
LinkedIn. Is, is that really working or? Uh, I, I'd be happy to share a, a very interesting stat. So when the last research that we did, we found out that every minute uh, we hire, there's about four hires being made on LinkedIn. Every minute, every passing minute. Uh, so that's the stat that I'd love to share. It's the easiest way to make a hire nowadays because, because you know, LinkedIn is something where you control over it. Uh, and, you know, we'll be seeing that trend go up even further. So I hope that directionally will help you consider the platform more strong as such. Yeah, thank you, Eddie. Uh, Rebecca, uh, what what format is uh, is is uh, in is advisable? There's you know Word, PDF, or PPT. Is there does that make a difference uh, when it actually goes yeah. into ATS and you know system generated uh, selection and all of that? My recommendation is to have a Word document. Uh, you know, don't use too much of graphics. The larger the size, it's going to be a problem to upload it. But when you're uploading it, try and save it as a PDF and upload it so that, you know, the formatting is locked in. You know, somebody who's downloading it has a different format and it doesn't sort of like spread out. Uh, the word start, doesn't start looking differently. So that helps. Otherwise, for in a, on a regular basis, I would say Word document to upload um, and you know try and avoid graphics in the in the in the you know in the CV in the document. Uh, on the other hand, what Arjit just said, you know, if you have a website, if you are a graphic designer and you want to showcase, um, that's when perhaps you can link them to a website or your social media handle, something which is online they can go and check out. But in a document, I would say limit limit your graphics. All right, great. Thanks, Rebecca. All right, I think uh, we're just coming to the end of the session. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Eddie and Rebecca. And like I mentioned, if you have any of you have any questions, uh, you know, feel free to connect with us uh, on the uh, uh, on the email address that I shared, or even connect with uh, uh, Eddie and Rebecca on LinkedIn, uh, uh, and, and also follow APC LinkedIn page. You get a lot of uh, you know posts which you can reshare. Um, thanks, thanks for joining in today. I'm sure it was helpful uh, with a lot of information, new things. I've learned a lot of new things. Uh, thank you, Eddie and Rebecca. Um, and we can uh, close in prayer. Eddie, if you can just lead us in prayer, uh, and then we can close the session. Thank you. All right, please. Thank you. Let's just pray, everyone. No, we thank you for. This time, we thank you for keeping us alive in this day and age. And we thank you for these opportunities that you've given us. I pray that Holy Spirit would help us uh, tune to your voice, would help us hear your leading, and I pray that you will guide us. You are a helper. You are uh, the one who will help us literally amp our game, help us move to the next level and go ahead and take our mountain on our chases. I pray that you would lead us, hold our hands, and, and take us where we need to go, oh God Jesus. I pray for those of us who are looking for a change, that your voice will be evident and will guide us. And for those of you, for, for us on the call, oh Lord, who, who probably are confused of what we're going to do next, I pray that you'll, your voice will comfort us and your voice will lead us into our next uh, you know, path, oh Lord, and what we're going to do next. I pray for those who need um, healing. I pray for those of uh, us who on the call who really need uh you know, probably an area that needs your voice and your hand, Lord. I pray that you would bless us all, Lord Jesus. Keep us safe through this day. And I pray that uh, even as we uh, spend, go back time and spend time with friends and family and we meet tomorrow as a community and worship you, Lord, uh, that we'll experience greater levels of your love, greater levels of your joy, and we'll worship you like never before. We thank and praise you for who you are. And we're grateful for this community, oh Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Amen. Uh, Eddie and Rebecca, and thanks everyone for joining in. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Mel Melky, can I take just five minutes? I'm sorry yeah. that I'm stretching. Please, please, but, please go ahead. All right. Sorry, I'm greedy about this because too, there's no, no, too no, much no, of good do. stuff going on. <laughs> so, uh, Eddie and Rebecca, just quickly, uh, two things. First of all, a person I know who uh, there are actually few few people who are trying to change the industry. Uh, like, for example, uh, teachers, government clerks, okay, they have, they are well educated, uh, and but they, they are struggling with the salary structures and the excuses they are getting in office in terms of, uh, you know, like, 
appraisal and everything so what what would you suggest like for example a person is in teaching profession and wants to now get into the uh, talent and acquisition team or hr team uh, in corporate field and one last question uh, ad most probably you can help me with this i'm getting to hear a lot about uh, managed farming okay then uh, cloud kitchen businesses where i being uh, already employed i'm working somewhere i don't have to leave my job at the same time start investing and that can become a good uh, source of income as a you know a small business where i'm just contributing and taking a share out of it if you have any uh, information on that you can help me with that so these are the only two questions nalki thank you i'm done <laughs> okay so um yeah i i think i i also have a friend who's a teacher at some point she was considering if she wants to move into corporate uh, i think it's really grueling and uh, the compensation all of that is not great i think especially with the pandemic a lot of people are working from home so i can completely understand so in such a case i would say um you know look at your transferable skills right i mean uh, teaching is the closest to learning and development uh, so i would probably sort of like orient my my cv in such a way saying that you know hey i did this 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 and you know it is the most closest to learning and development or counseling i'm not sure where does she want to get in i mean it should not be just some job right something that she would like doing um so i would try and see if i can orient some of those transferable skills and find the closest corporate job to get in um and orient my cv accordingly in parallel i would probably upskill myself with some courses because you'll have to remain relevant right and and right now i think versus in western countries than in, in you know in india for an if you open hr role there's like tons of people who have like all of them have relevant skills so it's very hard to pick and choose so when you're coming from a different industry it's a little bit more difficult so i would say try and do that and see if you can do some sort of uh, work with a smaller organization uh, you know freelancing part time anything that you can pick up some skills as a part of where you can get into corporate that you can really see that i'm you know i'm i'm learning from here from the skills from some of my experiences and now there's a lot more opportunities to do that if she wants to get into talent acquisition there's a lot of open work from home roles uh, a lot of agencies open opening up to sort of like pick up so she can probably try some of those and see if it works for her i would sort of look at transferable skills i would um, from her earlier job then look at upskilling herself uh, try and see if she can sort of like uh, do some part time or freelancing that she can sort of like pick up corporate skills before she sort of approaches a corporate role and applies for a job of course i think all of that sort of like works mainly because then you have to use referral i think network works well then um then my aim would be to look at probably startups who are a little bit more willing to take people who are from different backgrounds uh then straight away aiming for big corporates unless you can try that i mean anything is possible these days sorry sister rebecca and uh, melvin Thank one you, last rebecca. question uh, one last question from rajiv here uh, people who are 20 years of uh, above experience how do you see the recruitment happening in percentage means is it we are hearing that a lot of jobs are there but mostly there for middle managers or so what about the senior roles what is the data saying do you have any insight please i don't have any data as such but there are opportunities for people from what i see in the talent market landscape is there are roles but we don't have appropriate skills so my suggestion is you know if you're not getting the job where you need i would say try and see what is the gap in your cv and see if you can how you can bridge that gap either with experience upskilling education i would try and do that and see how to best sort of like aim for the role that you're looking for And just adding there for to for to Archit's point, Archit, I shared a link in the chat, so that would really help you, uh, help your friend, especially find out what would be the next plate. Like Rebecca highlighted skills, this is a tool that will help you map the skills in you know to uh, to to the next play where the teacher friend of yours can find a role. Like for example, edtech companies are looking for teachers to you know, which is much more corporateish, where you can actually move into a role uh, from a traditional teacher setup. Uh, and there are a lot of edtech companies right these days you find it like literally one out of every three ads that you see on tv are edtech companies so uh, again this small example but you could use that explorer tool that i shared which will help you map and find jobs that matter to you so so the 65% you, so you are saying uh, 65% you are saying there is a recruitment happening through linkedin how much is for 20 years and above is it mostly for a uh, lesser or it's, it's at the higher level also 
just a data that, I wanted to understand. I, I unfortunately don't have that uh, data, Rajiv, okay. but in case if I find it for sure, I'll, I'll sure. pass it through mentally for sure. Thank you. All right, uh, Eddie, uh, sorry to keep you guys waiting. If you, if you okay, maybe just another five minutes, Eddie and Rebecca. Uh, I, I, I saw Raksha putting a hand up. Raksha, you have a question. Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't want to sound really silly, but I have a question to ask with respect to job and about how I can be in the right one. So I've been working uh, like for about seven years now, looking for a job change simple is how would I know when I'm trying to move I just don't many things sound lucrative even to my mind and to myself how do I know I am placed in the right one and uh, that's where I am supposed to be like did you quite get me as in uh, the gods or whatever like it I actually put this up even in my so yeah uh, so, um, so I'm guessing that you're asking personally, how do you figure out whether you're in the right role yes. or, uh, you know, and also, you know, what's God's plan for you? Yes. I, I mean, and you were breaking yeah. up, so I'm just trying to figure it out. Oh, sorry. I'm outside. Yes. So even when I'm looking for a job change, I would also like to know if I'm supposed to be here, wait for some more time. How do I go next? And all of it. Uh, or where rather which sometimes becomes easy if God says these things but yeah so just how do I figure that out because so, every um, industry comes with yeah. some of the other positives and negatives so yeah yeah Rebecca so corporate world Raksha is you know difficult wherever you go I mean uh, you think that you're escaping from something going to because it's all different individuals, different work environments is bound to be, uh, you know, issues. So the thing is, my thought would be like, you know, where is your heart, right? Where are your heart? Where is your heart? Where is the skill? What's your passionate about? Um, where do you get the most joy from? I would probably, you know, make sure that I can map that out um, to really identify where I want to be. Of course, I think you would want to keep that in prayer and, you um, in you know like I can probably just give my example and Melky can add I think he's more <laughs> experienced he's been a pastor probably to talk about God's plan but um, you know from my pre previous job I recently switched over to this one in January I had three offers and you know first time in my life I had three offers after praying so fervently <laughs> um, you know with the difficult time that I had in the previous one but I was like you know so scared that um you know, where do I go? Am I making the right choice? But sometimes you just have to pray, uh, you know, list down your, you know, you have to make those, I would say, written decisions saying that what is your, what is that you want? What's your pros and cons? Like in my case, I was like, you know, I want to make sure the organization has a culture of flexibility. Um, it's a good role, of course. Then, you know, both of them were like two of the organization had really good roles, but one was far, I, you know, commuting was a problem. So I listed everything down as like, okay, fine. For me, this logically, God has given us wisdom to make those decisions. This logically makes sense. Then I really prayed about it saying that God, please give me wisdom. Um, and finally, I had to take action. And sometimes I feel that you hear, sometimes it's just a prompting and, you know, God giving you wisdom to make the right decisions. So I made the right, you know, I feel I made the right decisions by moving here. Of course, uh, there are times when things happen in this work. Did I make the right decision? I was thinking the other day. But uh, the other two roles, which I didn't pick up, I had referred one more colleague of mine into that role. She actually got the role and she is not very happy at this point in time. That's when it took me saying that, you know, sometimes you just have to make that, you know, uh, you know, logical uh, wisdom related decisions, pray about it and make the choice. You know, that's how I work, um, you know, over to Melky to you know, really see if there's anything he wants to add to the God's no, plan. Uh, but, no, yeah. yeah, nothing but just, just one point, you know, most often than not, you know, uh, or in most cases, right, uh, what we do, uh, you know, how do we identify a purpose or like what God wants us to do is could be always related to the skills what we have. You know, God plans those skills in us, the talents that he, uh, you know, that he has put in us. Like I, I cannot aspire to be a, a musician like Eddie because you don't have the skill. I know what, you know, God, I, you know, so God really plans some of those skills and talents in us and that, and when we start working or, you know, pursuing some certain things in line of that, 
that is a good indication. There are many ways that you can identify what God wants you to do, or what wants us to do. Uh, right. I've just posted a one uh, a link to a book. It's uh, fulfilling God's purpose for our life. It's a simple PDF. Um, maybe you know that would there are there are certain points that we can read and understand practical ways of understanding uh, you know uh, God's plan for our lives, especially in the professional area and stuff. Maybe you can just uh, read and um, that would really help you, workshop. Okay. Good. Uh, I think that was uh, that was a wonderful time, and thanks for staying back, everyone. I hope uh, and I, it was helpful in some way or the other. Um, and we will close. And if you have any questions, like I mentioned, please feel free to um, you know drop in a mail or a message um, uh, or you know email me or to the professional's email ID, and we will stay in touch. And some of you had actually shared your profile with us. Uh, we have shared it with, uh, you know, the people within the church and other organization. Um, we believe that somewhere or the other, and things will work out. Um, so you're looking forward to that. Thank you once again, uh, Eddie and Rebecca. Um, and uh, let's just close now. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity. Bye-bye. God bless you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. ABC rocks. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everyone. God bless you. Bye bye. God bless. Hello, Melky. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Yeah, Raksha here. Uh, you shared something about uh, be thoughtful or something, if I'm not sure. Yeah, that's uh, right. About yeah. Connected with that. And, uh, yeah. I think, uh, do I have your uh, phone number? Uh, did you no. register online? Yes, I did register. Uh, okay, let me just... I'm just trying to get your. Uh, I'm just dropping it in the chat for yeah, you. Can just, yeah, you can just drop a uh, no, The one, other Melki Sedek is also you only, no? No, that is. Yeah. No, so okay, that, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can, that's M E L K I. Yeah, that's me. Okay, got it. I got okay, you. Okay. So please will, ping uh, me. Yeah. yeah I'll connect That'll you. help me a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Thank Bye. you so much, Melky. Bye. Well, thank you. Bye. Uh, Biswanath, I've shared my number with you on, on a private chat. So.